A cop named Clark arrests a black girl for sleeping in the park, assuming it's a simple case of breaking the law. But when he uncovers the heartbreaking reason behind her situation, he breaks down in tears. What devastating truth could push a child into such desperate circumstances? Before we get into the story, comment below where in the world you are watching from today. And if you like this story, don't forget to subscribe. Officer Clark let out a weary sigh as he steered his patrol car through the quiet streets of the city. The streetlights cast a soft glow on the empty sidewalks, and the hum of the engine was the only sound breaking the evening silence. His eyes felt heavy, and his mind was a jumble of all the cases he'd seen over the years. Another night, another shift, he muttered to himself, his voice gruff and tired. As he drove past the local park, something caught his eye. A small figure was curled up on a bench, barely visible in the dim light. Clark's brow furrowed as he slowed the car to a stop. He squinted, trying to make out what or who it was. What in the world? He said under his breath. Stepping out of the car, Clark approached the bench cautiously. As he got closer, he realized it was a young girl, no more than eight years old, fast asleep on the hard metal seat. Her clothes were dirty and wrinkled and her hair was a tangled mess. Clark's first thought was that she must be a runaway. He'd seen plenty of those in his time on the force. Kids who thought they could make it on their own, only to end up in worse trouble than they'd left behind. Hey kid, he called out, his voice stern and authoritative. Wake up. The girl stirred, her eyes fluttering open. When she saw Clark standing over her, fear flashed across her face. She sat up quickly, pressing herself against the back of the bench. What's your name? Clark asked, crossing his arms over his chest. What are you doing out here so late? The girl didn't answer. She just stared at him, her eyes wide and wary. Clark sighed, feeling his patience wearing thin. He was tired, and the last thing he wanted to deal with was a difficult kid. Look, he said, his tone softening just a bit. I'm Officer Clark. I'm not here to hurt you, but you can't be sleeping in the park. Where are your parents? The girl's lower lip trembled, but she still didn't speak. Clark noticed a small backpack tucked behind her on the bench. It looked worn and overstuffed, like she'd packed it in a hurry. What's your name? He tried again, gentler this time. After a long pause, the girl finally whispered, Tasha. Clark nodded, feeling like he was finally getting somewhere. Okay, Tasha. Can you tell me why you're out here all alone? Tasha's eyes darted around as if looking for an escape route. I... I can't go home, she said, her voice barely audible. Clark's cop instincts kicked in. There was more to this story than just a kid running away from home. Something in Tasha's eyes, the way she held herself so tightly, told him she was truly scared. Why can't you go home, Tasha? He asked, kneeling down to be at her eye level. Tasha shook her head, tears welling up in her eyes. Please don't make me go back, she pleaded. I can't, I can't go back there. Clark felt a twinge in his chest, a feeling he wasn't used to. He'd seen so much in his years on the force that he'd learned to keep his emotions in check. But something about this girl, so small and vulnerable, was getting to him. Okay, Tasha, he said softly. You don't have to go back right now, but you can't stay here either. It's not safe. Officer Clark stood up slowly, his knees creaking in protest. He looked down at Tasha, who was still huddled on the bench, her eyes darting between him and the ground. The night air was getting chilly, and he noticed her shivering slightly in her thin t-shirt. Come on, he said, his voice gruff but not unkind. Let's get you somewhere warm. Tasha hesitated, her small hands clutching her backpack tightly. Where? she asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Clark sighed, running a hand through his thinning hair. The station, he replied. We'll figure out what to do from there. As they walked towards his patrol car, Clark couldn't help but notice how small Tasha looked. Her shoulders were hunched and she walked with quick, nervous steps. It stirred something in him, a feeling he thought he'd buried long ago. You hungry? He asked as they reached the car. Tasha nodded silently. Clark opened the back door for her, then climbed into the driver's seat. 
He reached into the glove compartment and pulled out a slightly squashed granola bar. Here, he said, passing it back to her. It's not much, but it's something. Tasha took the bar with trembling hands. Thank you, she murmured. As Clark started the engine, he glanced at Tasha in the rearview mirror. She was nibbling on the granola bar, her eyes fixed on the passing streetlights outside. He couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to her story than just being a runaway. So, Tasha, he said, trying to keep his voice casual. Want to tell me why you can't go home? Tasha's eyes met his in the mirror for a brief moment before she looked away. My uncle, she said softly. He... He's not nice. Clark felt a knot form in his stomach. He'd heard those words before, from other kids in similar situations. It never got easier. What about your parents? He asked, dreading the answer. Tasha's lip quivered. Mom's in jail, she whispered. I don't know my dad. Clark's hands tightened on the steering wheel. He'd seen too many cases like this, kids falling through the cracks of a broken system. But something about Tasha's quiet strength, the way she held herself together despite everything, touched a part of him he thought was long dead. As they pulled up to the station, Clark made a decision. He wasn't sure if it was the right one, but he knew he couldn't just dump this kid into the system and forget about her. Listen, Tasha, he said, turning to face her. I'm going to help you. I don't know how yet, but I promise I won't let anyone hurt you again. For the first time that night, Tasha's eyes met his fully. In them, Clark saw a flicker of something he hadn't seen in years, hope. Clark led Tasha into the station, his hand gently guiding her through the bustling corridors. The fluorescent lights cast harsh shadows on her face, making her look even younger and more vulnerable than before. This way, he said, steering her towards an empty interview room. We'll get you processed and figure out what to do next. As they entered the small room, Clark noticed Tasha wincing as she sat down. He frowned, watching her carefully as she placed her backpack on the floor beside her. All right, Tasha, he began, his voice softer than usual. I need to ask you a few questions and take some photos. Standard procedure, okay? Tasha nodded silently, her eyes fixed on the table in front of her. As Clark started the routine paperwork, he couldn't help but notice more details about the girl's appearance. Her clothes were worn and dirty, hanging loosely on her small frame. Her cheekbones were sharp, her skin pale, clear signs of malnutrition. Tasha, when was the last time you had a proper meal? Clark asked, concern creeping into his voice. She shrugged, still not meeting his eyes. I don't know. A few days ago, maybe? Clark felt a pang in his chest. He'd seen this before. Too many times to count but something about Tasha's quiet resignation hit him hard. Okay, I'm going to need to take a few photos now, he said, picking up the camera. Can you stand up for me? As Tasha rose, her sleeve rode up slightly, revealing a pattern of dark bruises on her arm. Clark's breath caught in his throat. He'd seen bruises like that before, on himself, many years ago. Tasha, he said carefully, can you roll up your sleeves for me? The girl hesitated, her eyes darting nervously to the door. Slowly, she pushed up her sleeves, revealing more bruises in various stages of healing. Clark's stomach churned. He knelt down to her level, his voice gentle but firm. Tasha, I need you to tell me where these bruises came from. Tasha's lips trembled, but no words came out. She wrapped her arms around herself as if trying to disappear. Was it your uncle? Clark pressed, fighting to keep his voice steady. Did he do this to you? Tasha's silence was all the answer he needed. Clark felt a surge of anger, followed by a deep, aching sadness. He saw himself in this girl, scared, alone, trying to be brave in a world that had failed her. It's okay, he said softly. You don't have to say anything right now, but I want you to know that you're safe here. No one's going to hurt you anymore. As he spoke, Clark realized he meant every word. He couldn't explain it, but he felt a fierce protectiveness towards this girl he barely knew. He was determined to help her, to give her the chance he never had. Clark sat across from Tasha, his fingers tapping nervously on the table. 
He took a deep breath, trying to steady himself. Tasha, we need to talk about your family situation, he said gently. Can you tell me about your parents? Tasha's eyes darted around the room, avoiding Clark's gaze. My dad's not around, she mumbled. And my mom? She's in jail. Clark's heart sank. How long has she been there? A few months now, Tasha replied, her voice barely above a whisper. Clark nodded, jotting down notes. So who's been taking care of you? Tasha's shoulders tensed. My uncle, she said, her voice trembling. Clark noticed her discomfort and leaned forward slightly. Tasha, is everything okay at your uncle's house? Tears welled up in Tasha's eyes. She shook her head, unable to speak. Has he been hurting you? Clark asked softly. Tasha nodded, a tear rolling down her cheek. That's why I run away, she whispered. I can't stand being there anymore. Clark felt a surge of anger and pain. Memories of his own childhood flashed through his mind. The fear, the helplessness, the desperate need to escape. He clenched his fists under the table, fighting to keep his face neutral. I understand, Tasha, he said, his voice thick with emotion. You're very brave for telling me this. Clark wanted nothing more than to comfort the girl, to tell her that everything would be okay. But years of police training kicked in, reminding him to stick to protocol. He cleared his throat, tears forming on his eye, but forcing himself back into officer mode. I'm going to need to file a report about this, he explained, reaching for the necessary forms. We'll need to contact Child Protective Services and... As Clark rattled off the standard procedures, he felt a disconnect between his words and his emotions. Inside, he was a storm of anger and empathy, but outwardly, he maintained his professional demeanor. Tasha watched him with wide, fearful eyes. What's going to happen to me? She asked, her voice small and scared. Clark paused, his pen hovering over the form. He looked at Tasha, seeing the same fear and uncertainty he had felt as a child. He wanted to reassure her, to promise her that everything would be all right. But he knew better than to make promises he couldn't keep. We're going to do everything we can to keep you safe, he said finally, choosing his words carefully. That's the most important thing right now. As he continued filling out the paperwork, Clark struggled with the conflict between his professional duties and his personal feelings. He knew he needed to follow procedure, but every instinct screamed at him to do more, to protect this child who had suffered so much. Clark stood in his commanding officer's office, his jaw clenched tight as he listened to Captain Brennan's dismissive words. Look, Clark, Captain Brennan said with a sigh. We've seen this a hundred times before. Kid runs away, makes up a story to avoid going home. It's textbook. Clark felt his anger rising. Sir, with all due respect, I don't think this is just another runaway case. The girl has bruises and she's clearly malnourished. Captain Brennan waved his hand dismissively. Bruises? Kids get bruises all the time. And as for being skinny, have you seen what kids eat these days? Clark's fists clenched at his sides. He couldn't believe what he was hearing. Captain, I really think we need to investigate this further. Tasha's story. Enough, Clark. Captain Brennan cut him off. We don't have the resources to chase down every sob story that comes through here. Follow protocol, file the report, and let CPS handle it. As Clark left the office, he felt a storm of emotions brewing inside him. He was angry at his captain for not taking Tasha's situation seriously, but he was also conflicted about his own role in all of this. For years, Clark had prided himself on being a by-the-book officer. He'd seen so much ugliness in the world that he'd learned to keep his emotions in check, to treat every case with cool detachment. But now, faced with Tasha's haunted eyes and trembling voice, he found his carefully constructed walls crumbling. He walked back to his desk, his mind racing. The image of Tasha's bruises kept flashing before his eyes, a stark reminder of the pain she'd endured. Clark couldn't shake the feeling that if he followed orders and simply filed the report, He'd be failing her just like the system had failed him all those years ago. As he sat down, Clark caught sight of Tasha through the office window. She was sitting alone in the waiting area, her small frame hunched over, looking lost and afraid. In that moment, Clark saw himself as a child, scared, alone, and desperate for someone to believe him 
He rubbed his face, feeling the weight of his badge on his chest. Was this what being a good cop meant? Following orders even when every instinct told him it was wrong? Clark had always believed that his jaded view of the world made him a better officer, able to see through lies and manipulation. But now, he wondered if he'd become so cynical that he'd lost sight of why he'd become a cop in the first place. Clark looked down at the report form on his desk, then back at Tasha. He knew what protocol demanded, but for the first time in years, he found himself questioning whether following the rules was truly the right thing to do. Clark hesitated for a moment, then walked over to where Tasha sat. He pulled up a chair, trying to soften his usual gruff demeanor. Tasha, he said gently, can we talk for a bit? The girl looked up at him, her eyes wary. She nodded slowly, pulling her knees closer to her chest. Clark took a deep breath. I know you've probably told this story before, but I need to hear it from you. Can you tell me what's been happening? Tasha's lower lip trembled. Nobody ever believes me, she whispered. I'm listening now, Clark said, surprising himself with the gentleness in his voice. Tasha's words came out in a rush. My uncle, he... He hurts me. He drinks a lot. And when he gets mad, he hits me. Sometimes he doesn't give me food for days. Clark felt a knot forming in his stomach. Is that why you ran away? Tasha nodded, tears welling up in her eyes. I tried telling my teacher once, but she said I was making it up for attention. The social worker who came to our house believed everything my uncle said. As Clark listened, memories of his own childhood flooded back. He remembered the fear, the helplessness, the desperation for someone, anyone, to believe him. So you decided to live on the streets? Clark asked softly. It's scary out there, Tasha admitted. But sometimes it feels safer than being at home. Clark's mind raced. He thought about all the times he'd seen kids on the street and assumed they were troublemakers. How many of them had stories like Tasha's? How do you survive out there? He asked. Tasha shrugged. I sneak into the school gym to shower sometimes. There's a nice lady at the diner who gives me leftovers if I help clean up. But it's hard, especially when it's cold. Clark felt a wave of shame wash over him. He'd been so quick to judge her, to assume she was just another delinquent. But here was a child doing everything she could to survive a situation no one should have to endure. Tasha, Clark said, his voice thick with emotion. I'm sorry I didn't listen to you earlier. I should have. The girl looked at him, surprise flickering across her face. You believe me? Clark nodded, feeling a lump in his throat. I do. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you. As he said those words, Clark realized he meant them with every fiber of his being. He saw now how broken the system was, how it had failed not just Tasha, but countless others, including himself. As Clark and Tasha sat in quiet understanding, the station door burst open. A burly man with bloodshot eyes stumbled in, his face twisted with anger. Where's my niece, he bellowed, his words slurred. I'm here to take her home. Clark felt Tasha stiffen beside him. He looked down to see her trembling, her eyes wide with fear. That's him, she whispered, her voice barely audible. My uncle. Clark stood up, positioning himself between Tasha and her uncle. Sir, I'm Officer Clark. Can I help you? The man glared at Clark, then spotted Tasha. There you are. Come on, we're going home. Clark's jaw clenched. He could smell the alcohol on the man's breath from where he stood. Sir... I'm going to need you to calm down. Calm down, the uncle spat. That's my niece you've got there. I'm her legal guardian and I'm taking her home now. Clark glanced back at Tasha, who was shrinking into her chair, looking smaller than ever. He felt a surge of protectiveness. Sir, we need to discuss a few things first, Clark said, trying to keep his voice steady. The uncle's face reddened. There's nothing to discuss. She's a troublemaker, always running off. I'm doing my best to raise her right and this is how she repays me. Clark's mind raced. He knew the law. Without evidence or Tasha pressing charges, he had no legal grounds to keep her from her guardian. But everything in him screamed that sending her back would be a terrible mistake. He knelt down beside Tasha, speaking softly. Tasha, 
I know you're scared, but if you tell me what he's done, if you press charges, we can keep you safe. Tasha's eyes darted between Clark and her uncle. She opened her mouth, then closed it, shaking her head. I... I can't, she whispered, tears spilling down her cheeks. He'll hurt me worse if I do. Clark felt helpless. He stood up, facing the uncle again, his mind frantically searching for a solution. Officer, the uncle growled. I don't know what lies she's been telling you, but I'm taking her home now. You got no right to keep her here. Clark knew he was right. Without Tasha's testimony, his hands were tied. He looked at the scared girl, then back at her aggressive uncle, feeling the weight of the impossible situation crushing down on him. Clark took a deep breath, his mind racing. He couldn't let Tasha go back with her uncle, not like this. He turned to the angry man, forcing a calm he didn't feel into his voice. Sir, I understand your concern, but it's late and Tasha's been through a lot tonight. As a precaution, I'd like to drive her home myself. It's standard procedure in cases like this. The uncle's face twisted with suspicion. What cases? She ain't in trouble, is she? No, sir. Clark lied smoothly. It's just protocol when we find miners out alone at night. I'll have her home soon. I promise. The uncle glared at Clark, then at Tasha, who seemed to shrink even smaller under his gaze. Finally, he grunted and stumbled towards the door. Fine. But she better be home in an hour or I'm calling your superiors. As the door slammed behind him, Clark let out a breath he didn't know he'd been holding. He turned to Tasha, whose eyes were wide with fear and confusion. Come on, he said gently. Let's go for a ride. In the car, silence hung heavy between them. Clark's knuckles were white on the steering wheel as memories flooded back, memories he'd tried so hard to forget. The sting of a belt, the crash of a bottle, the feeling of being small and helpless. He glanced at Tasha, huddled in the passenger seat. She looked so much like he had felt back then, scared, alone, with no one to turn to. Tasha, he said softly, I know you're scared. I know you think no one can help you. But I want you to know. I believe you. And I'm going to do everything I can to keep you safe. Tasha looked up at him, her eyes shining with unshed tears. Why? she whispered. Why do you care? Clark's throat tightened. Because a long time ago, I was just like you. And no one was there to help me. As they drove through the quiet streets, Clark's mind raced. He knew he couldn't take Tasha back to her uncle, but what could he do? The system had failed her, just like it had failed him. He was a cop, sworn to uphold the law, but right now the law seemed to be on the wrong side. By the time they pulled up in front of Tasha's house, Clark had made up his mind. He couldn't let her suffer anymore. He didn't know exactly what he was going to do, but he knew he had to act. Tasha he said, turning to face her. I promise you, I'm not going to let you go back in there. I don't know how yet, but I'm going to find a way to keep you safe. For the first time that night, Tasha's face softened, a glimmer of hope shining in her eyes. Clark felt a fierce protectiveness wash over him. He didn't know what the consequences would be, but he knew he had to do something. The only question was how far was he willing to go? As Clark pulled up to Tasha's house, his heart sank. The small, run-down building looked like it was barely standing. Paint peeled from the walls, and trash littered the overgrown lawn. It was a far cry from a safe, loving home. Is this it? Clark asked gently, though he already knew the answer. Tasha nodded, her eyes fixed on the cracked front window. She seemed to shrink even smaller in her seat. Clark took a deep breath and stepped out of the car. The night air felt heavy, filled with an unseen tension. As he opened Tasha's door, her uncle burst out of the house, his face red with anger. About time, he shouted, stumbling down the front steps. Where have you been, girl? Clark instinctively stepped in front of Tasha, shielding her from her uncle's glare. The smell of alcohol hit him like a wave. Sir, I brought Tasha home as requested, he said, trying to keep his voice steady. The uncle sneered. Well, ain't that nice of you. Now hand her over. She's got chores to do.
Clark felt Tasha trembling behind him. He clenched his fists, memories of his own childhood flooding back. It's quite late, sir, Clark said. Perhaps the chores can wait until morning? The uncle's eyes narrowed dangerously. Listen here, cop, what happens in my house is my business. That little brat needs to learn her place. Clark's stomach churned. Every word confirmed his worst fears. He glanced back at Tasha, seeing the terror in her eyes. In that moment, he knew he couldn't leave her here. Sir, I'm concerned about Tasha's well-being, Clark said, his voice firmer now. There are signs of abuse, and I... Abuse? The uncle spat. I'm teaching her discipline, something you cops should understand. Clark felt a surge of anger. He'd heard those excuses before, from his own abusers, from the system that had failed him. And now, here it was again, failing Tasha just as it had failed him years ago. Discipline doesn't leave bruises, Clark said, his voice low and dangerous. It doesn't make a child sleep in the park because she's too afraid to come home. The uncle took a menacing step forward. You got no right to tell me how to raise my kid. Now get off my property before I call your superiors. Clark stood his ground, acutely aware of Tasha's small hand clutching the back of his jacket. The situation was spiraling, becoming more intense by the second. He knew he was crossing a line, knew he could lose his job for this. But looking at Tasha, remembering his own pain, he couldn't bring himself to care. Clark's heart pounded as he stood between Tasha and her uncle. The girl's tiny fingers dug into his jacket, her whole body shaking. He could feel her fear, raw and real, seeping into him. Please, Tasha whispered, her voice barely audible. Please don't leave me here. Those words hit Clark like a punch to the gut. He'd heard them before, in his own head, all those years ago when he was just a scared kid himself. The memory of his own pain, coupled with Tasha's desperate plea, made something inside him snap. Clark turned to face Tasha, kneeling down to her level. Her eyes were wide with terror, brimming with unshed tears. He saw himself in those eyes, saw the child he used to be, begging for someone, anyone, to help. It's okay he said softly, surprising himself with the gentleness in his voice. You're not staying here. Tasha's uncle let out a roar of anger. You can't do that. She's mine. Clark stood up, squaring his shoulders. He knew he was crossing a line, knew he could lose everything for this. But looking at Tasha, he realized some things were more important than rules or protocol. No, Clark said firmly. She's not yours to hurt anymore. With that, he gently guided Tasha back to his patrol car. Her uncle shouted threats and obscenities, but Clark tuned him out. All he could focus on was getting Tasha to safety. As they reached the car, Clark opened the back door. Get in, he said softly. You're safe now. Tasha hesitated for just a moment before climbing in. Clark shut the door and quickly got into the driver's seat. As he started the engine, he caught Tasha's eye in the rearview mirror. I won't let anyone hurt you again, he promised, his voice thick with emotion. I'm going to protect you, no matter what. As Clark pulled away from the curb, leaving the shouting uncle behind, he felt a weight lift from his shoulders. He didn't know what would happen next, but he knew one thing for certain. He'd made the right choice. Clark drove through the darkening streets, his mind racing as fast as his heart. He knew he couldn't take Tasha back to the station or to his own home both would raise too many questions. Instead, he headed for a small rundown motel on the outskirts of town. We'll stay here tonight, he told Tasha softly as he parked the car. It's not much, but it's safe. Tasha nodded silently, her eyes wide and watchful. Clark could see the exhaustion etched on her young face. Inside the dimly lit room, Clark helped Tasha settle onto one of the twin beds. He noticed her trembling hands and sunken cheeks. Clark's heart clenched. He grabbed his phone and ordered a pizza, making sure to get extra toppings. While they waited, he found some clean towels and showed Tasha where the bathroom was. You can take a hot shower if you want, he offered. It might help you feel better. Tasha hesitated, then nodded gratefully. The sound of running water filled the small room as Clark sat heavily on the other bed, rubbing his face with his hands. What had he gotten himself into?
but looking at the closed bathroom door, he knew he couldn't have done anything else. When the pizza arrived, the smell of hot cheese and pepperoni filled the room. Tasha emerged from the bathroom, her hair damp and her face a little brighter. She eyed the pizza box hungrily. Go ahead, Clark encouraged. Eat as much as you want. Tasha didn't need to be told twice. She ate slice after slice, barely pausing to breathe. Clark watched her, a mix of sadness and anger churning in his gut. How long had this child been neglected and abused? As Tasha's hunger began to subside, Clark noticed her eyelids drooping. Why don't you get some sleep, he suggested. You're safe here, I promise. Tasha looked at him, a flicker of trust in her eyes. You won't leave? I'll be right here, Clark assured her. I'm not going anywhere. Once Tasha was tucked into bed, Clark stepped outside the room to make a phone call. He dialed the number of an old friend who worked in social services. Marita, it's Clark. I need your help, he said urgently. He explained Tasha's situation, hoping his friend could cut through the red tape and get the girl the help she desperately needed. But as Marita spoke, Clark's hope faded. She talked about procedures, paperwork, and waiting lists. Her voice was sympathetic but detached, as if Tasha was just another case number. Can't you do anything? Clark pleaded, his frustration mounting. This girl needs help now, not in six months. I'm sorry, Clark, Marita replied, her voice tired. The system's overloaded. There's only so much we can do. Clark ended the call, feeling defeated. He looked back at the motel room door, knowing that on the other side was a child who had been failed by everyone who should have protected her. He realized with a heavy heart that if he wanted to help Tasha, he might have to do it on his own. Next afternoon, Clark sat in his patrol car, parked a block away from Tasha's uncle's house. His fingers tapped nervously on the steering wheel as he watched the rundown building. Something about the uncle's behavior at the station had set off alarm bells in Clark's mind, and he couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to this situation than just child abuse. As the night wore on, Clark observed a steady stream of visitors coming and going from the house. Most of them looked rough, with shifty eyes and nervous movements. Clark's cop instincts kicked into high gear. What's going on in there? he muttered to himself. Using his police contacts, Clark ran a background check on Tasha's uncle. The results made his blood run cold. The man had a long history of arrests for drug possession and distribution, though he'd somehow managed to avoid any major convictions. Clark's mind raced. If Tasha's uncle was involved in drug dealing, it would explain the constant flow of visitors and the aggressive behavior at the station. It also meant that Tasha wasn't just at risk of abuse she could be in danger of getting caught up in something far worse. The next day, Clark called in a favor from a friend in the narcotics division. Together, they discreetly set up surveillance on the uncle's house. Over the next few days, they gathered evidence of what appeared to be a small-scale drug operation. Clark's heart sank as he realized the full extent of the danger Tasha had been living in. He thought of the young girl, now safely hidden away in a motel, and knew he couldn't let her go back to that environment. We need to shut this down, Clark told his narcotics colleague. But we have to be careful. There's a kid involved, and I don't want her getting caught in the crossfire. As they planned their next move, Clark felt a mix of determination and fear. He knew he was crossing lines, getting personally involved in a way that could jeopardize his career. But when he thought of Tasha's bruised arms and haunted eyes, he knew he couldn't turn back now. Clark decided to dig deeper, to gather enough evidence to not only protect Tasha, but to bring down her uncle's entire operation. He knew the risks were high, but the stakes were even higher. For the first time in years, Clark felt a sense of purpose beyond just doing his job. He was fighting for something, for someone, and he wasn't about to give up. Back at the police station, Clark sat at his desk, staring at the blank incident report form on his computer screen. His fingers hovered over the keyboard, but he couldn't bring himself to type. Filing this report would mean officially documenting that he had returned Tasha to her uncle, something he hadn't done and had no intention of doing. Officer Johnson, Clark's partner, approached his desk with a steaming cup of coffee. Hey, Clark, he said, setting the mug down. Did you ever finish processing that runaway case from the other night? The girl from the park? Clark's jaw tightened. 
Not yet, he mumbled, avoiding eye contact. Johnson raised an eyebrow. What's the holdup? It should have been a simple drop-off. Clark shrugged, trying to appear nonchalant. Just got caught up with other things. I'll get to it. As Johnson walked away, Clark could feel the curious glances from other officers. He knew his behavior was raising suspicions, but he couldn't bring himself to care. All he could think about was Tasha's safety. Next day, Sergeant Miller called Clark into his office. Clark, we need to talk about the Tasha Williams case, he said, his tone serious. Where's the paperwork? Clark shifted uncomfortably in his chair. I'm still working on it, sir. Miller leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. It's been days, Clark. This isn't like you. What's going on? For a moment, Clark considered telling his superior everything, about the abuse, the drug operation, and his decision to hide Tasha. But the words caught in his throat. He couldn't risk Tasha's safety, not when he was so close to finding a real solution. I'm just being thorough, sir, Clark replied, his voice steady despite the turmoil inside. There were some complications with the case. I want to make sure everything's in order before I file the report. Miller didn't look convinced, but he nodded slowly. All right, Clark, but I need that paperwork on my desk by tomorrow. Understood? Yes, sir, Clark said, knowing full well he had no intention of complying. As he left the office, Clark's mind wandered to Tasha. He thought about her smile when he'd brought her a warm meal, the way her eyes lit up when she realized she was safe. For the first time in years, Clark felt a warmth in his chest, a feeling he'd long forgotten. Clark sat in his car, parked a block away from Tasha's uncle's house. His hands gripped the steering wheel tightly as he stared at the folder on the passenger seat. Inside were photographs, bank statements, and witness testimonies. Irrefutable evidence of the uncle's involvement in a local drug ring. He had spent sleepless nights gathering this information, calling in favors from old contacts and following leads that took him to the seediest parts of town. Now, he had everything he needed to bring Tasha's uncle down. But at what cost? Mc Clark knew that if he turned this evidence in, he'd have to explain how he obtained it. He'd have to admit to hiding Tasha, to going behind his superiors' backs, to breaking countless protocols. His career, the only thing he had left in his life, would be over. He closed his eyes and leaned back in his seat. Tasha's face flashed in his mind, her frightened eyes when they first met the hesitant smile when he brought her food, the look of hope when he promised to protect her. Something stirred in Clark's chest, a feeling he thought he'd buried long ago. With a deep breath, Clark opened his eyes and reached for the folder. His decision was made. He may lose his badge, but he couldn't live with himself if he let Tasha down. He had been failed by the system as a child, and he refused to let history repeat itself. Clark's phone buzzed incessantly as he drove back to the safe house where Tasha was staying. He glanced at the screen, his jaw clenching as he saw an unfamiliar number. With a deep breath, he answered the call. Where's my niece? The man's voice was a low growl, filled with barely contained rage. Clark kept his tone even. She's safe. That's all you need to know. Listen here, you pig, the uncle snarled. If you don't bring her back right now, I'll make sure you regret it. I've got friends in high places, you know. Clark's grip tightened on the steering wheel. Is that a threat? It's a promise, the uncle sneered before hanging up. Clark's mind raced. He knew he was running out of time. The uncle's connections could make things difficult, and Clark needed to gather more concrete evidence before he could make a move. When he arrived at the safe house, he found Tasha curled up in a corner of the couch, her eyes wide and unfocused. She flinched when he entered the room. Tasha, Clark said softly, approaching her slowly. It's just me. You're safe here. Tasha looked up at him, her lower lip trembling. He's going to find me, isn't he? She whispered. He always does. Clark's heart ached at the fear in her voice. He knelt down beside her, careful not to make any sudden movements. I won't let that happen, Tasha. I promise. Tears welled up in Tasha's eyes. But what if you can't stop him? What if, what if I'm never safe? Her voice broke and she began to sob.
her small body shaking with each breath. Clark hesitated for a moment, then gently placed a hand on her shoulder. To his surprise, Tasha leaned into his touch, seeking comfort. He wrapped his arms around her, letting her cry. As he held the trembling girl, Clark's determination grew. He knew he had to act fast. The evidence he had gathered so far was circumstantial at best. He needed something concrete, something that would put Tasha's uncle away for good. Tasha, he said gently once her sobs had subsided. I know it's hard, but I need your help. Can you tell me anything about your uncle's friends? The ones who come to the house? Tasha wiped her eyes and nodded slowly. There's a man with a scar on his face. He comes late at night sometimes. Uncle always makes me stay in my room when he's there. Clark's mind raced. The man with the scar could be the key to unraveling the whole operation. He needed to find him, and fast. You've been very brave, Tasha, Clark said, giving her shoulder a gentle squeeze. I promise you, I'm going to make sure you're safe, no matter what it takes. As he stood up, Clark's phone buzzed again. Another threat from Tasha's uncle. The race against time had begun, and Clark knew he couldn't afford to lose. Next evening, Clark's heart pounded as he approached the rundown house where Tasha's uncle lived. He clutched a manila folder containing the damning evidence he'd gathered over the past few days. The scarred man Tasha had mentioned turned out to be a known drug dealer, and Clark had managed to capture photos of him meeting with the uncle late at night. Taking a deep breath, Clark knocked on the door. The sound of heavy footsteps approached, and the door swung open, revealing Tasha's uncle. His eyes narrowed as he recognized Clark. What do you want? He growled. Clark stood his ground. We need to talk about Tasha and your extracurricular activities. The uncle's face twisted with anger. I told you to stay out of this. He lunged forward, trying to grab Clark. Clark sidestepped, his police training kicking in. I have evidence of your abuse and your involvement in drug trafficking, he said firmly, holding up the folder. The uncle's eyes widened, a flicker of fear crossing his face before it was replaced by rage. You don't know what you're talking about, he shouted, swinging his fist at Clark. Clark ducked, narrowly avoiding the blow. It's over, he said. You're under arrest for child abuse and drug trafficking. The uncle lunged again, this time managing to grab Clark's shirt. They grappled, Clark struggling to maintain his grip on the folder while defending himself. You think you can protect her? The uncle snarled. You're nothing but a washed-up cop. Clark's jaw clenched. With a swift move, he broke free from the uncle's grip and pinned him against the wall. Maybe so, he said, his voice low and determined. But I'm a washed-up cop who's going to make sure you never hurt Tasha again. Sirens wailed in the distance, growing louder. Clark had called for backup before confronting the uncle, knowing he might need it. As the police cars pulled up, the uncle's fight seemed to drain out of him. He sagged against the wall, defeat written across his face. Clark read him his rights as his fellow officers approached. He handed over the folder of evidence to his partner, watching as they led the uncle away in handcuffs. As the adrenaline began to fade, the reality of what he'd done sank in. Clark had broken protocol, conducted an unauthorized investigation, and confronted a suspect without proper backup. His career was likely over, but as he thought of Tasha's tear-stained face, he knew he'd make the same choice again. Clark stepped into the police station, his shoulders heavy with the weight of his actions. The familiar buzz of activity around him felt different now, tinged with tension and uncertainty. He knew what was coming, but he held his head high, ready to face whatever consequences awaited him. As he walked through the hallway, he noticed the sideways glances and hushed whispers of his colleagues. Some looked at him with admiration, others with disappointment. Clark ignored them all, focusing on the task ahead. Officer Clark, a stern voice called out. My office now. Clark turned to see Captain Reynolds standing in the doorway of his office, his face a mask of controlled anger. With a deep breath, Clark followed him inside. The disciplinary hearing was already set up. Three senior officers sat behind a long table, their expressions grim. Clark took his seat across from them, his hands folded in his lap. Captain Reynolds began, his voice tight with disapproval. Officer Clark, 
You've been called here to explain your recent actions regarding the Tasha Williams case. You conducted an unauthorized investigation, confronted a suspect without proper backup, and broke numerous protocols. What do you have to say for yourself? Clark met the captain's gaze steadily. I stand by my decisions, sir. Tasha was in danger, and the system was failing her. I couldn't just stand by and watch it happen. One of the other officers leaned forward, her brow furrowed. But you took matters into your own hands, Clark. That's not how we operate. You could have jeopardized the entire case. With all due respect, ma'am, Clark replied, his voice firm but respectful. I did what I believed was necessary to protect an innocent child. The evidence I gathered was crucial in arresting her abusive uncle and breaking up a drug ring. The third officer, an older man with graying hair, spoke up. Your intentions may have been good, Clark, but your methods were reckless. You put yourself and others at risk. How can we trust your judgment in the future? Clark felt a twinge of doubt, but he pushed it aside. He thought of Tasha's bruised face, her fear, and her gratitude when she realized someone was finally fighting for her. I understand your concerns, he said slowly. But I've been on the force for years, and I've never seen a case that hit me quite like this one. I knew the risks, but I also knew that Tasha needed someone to stand up for her. If I had to do it all over again, I'd make the same choice. The following day, as the hearing commenced, Clark felt the weight of his actions pressing down on him. He braced himself for more criticism, but suddenly, the door to the office swung open. Excuse me, a familiar voice called out. Clark turned to see Marita Santos, a local social worker, standing in the doorway. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I need to speak on Officer Clark's behalf. Marita spoke, her voice steady. But I believe it's important for you to hear how Officer Clark's actions have impacted our community. To Clark's surprise, Captain Reynolds hesitated for a moment, then nodded. Very well. You may speak. Marita stepped forward her eyes bright with determination. Officer Clark's actions may have been unconventional, but they were absolutely necessary. Tasha Williams had fallen through the cracks of our system. Without Clark's intervention, she would still be in danger. As Marita spoke, more people filed into the room. Clark recognized faces from the neighborhood, parents, teachers, and even some of his fellow officers. One of Clark's colleagues, Officer Martinez, stepped forward. I've worked with Clark for years, he said. He's always been by the book. If he felt he had to take these actions, I trust his judgment. He saw something we all missed. The senior officers exchanged glances, clearly taken aback by this show of support. A local teacher, Mrs. Anderson, spoke up next. Tasha's been my student for two years, she said, her voice thick with emotion. I suspected something was wrong, but I didn't know how to help her. Officer Clark did what none of us could. He saved that little girl. As more community members shared their perspectives, Clark felt a lump forming in his throat. He'd always seen himself as a loner, someone who didn't need anyone's approval. But now, hearing these people defend him, he realized how much their support meant. Captain Reynolds cleared his throat, looking thoughtful. Well, this is certainly unexpected. Officer Clark... It seems you've made quite an impact on this community. Clark nodded, still processing the outpouring of support. I... I didn't do it for recognition, sir. I just couldn't stand by and let Tasha suffer. One of the senior officers leaned forward, her expression softening. Your methods were unorthodox, Clark, but it's clear your heart was in the right place. And the results speak for themselves. As the hearing continued... Clark began to see a shift in the room. The stern faces of his superiors began to relax, and there was a new tone of respect in their voices as they discussed his actions. For the first time since the ordeal began, Clark felt a glimmer of hope. He'd acted out of compassion and a deep-seated need to protect Tasha, and now he was seeing that his community valued those qualities. Maybe, just maybe, he had done more than save one girl. He had reminded everyone, including himself, of the true meaning of justice and protection. Despite the community's support, Clark's actions still warranted consequences. Captain Reynolds delivered the verdict, a two-week suspension without pay. Clark nodded, accepting the punishment without argument. He knew he'd do it all again in a heartbeat. 
As he left the station, Clark felt a strange mix of emotions. Relief that Tasha was safe, pride in standing up for what was right, and a gnawing ache as old memories began to surface. At home, Clark found himself with more time to think than he'd had in years. He sat in his small living room, staring at a faded photo of himself as a child. The boy in the picture smiled, but Clark remembered the pain behind that smile. Memories flooded back, sharp and vivid. The sound of his father's angry voice, the sting of his mother's indifference, the cold loneliness of foster homes that never felt like home. Clark's chest tightened as he recalled the countless times he'd cried out for help, only to be ignored or dismissed. I was just like Tasha, he whispered to the empty room. For days, Clark wrestled with his past. He remembered the social workers who'd looked the other way, the teachers who'd failed to notice his bruises, the cops who'd believed his parents' lies. The system had failed him, just as it had almost failed Tasha. One afternoon, as Clark walked through the park where he'd first found Tasha, he made a decision. He couldn't change his past, but he could use it to fuel his determination to help others. He would fight for kids like Tasha, for the children who had no voice who needed someone to believe in them. Clark's resolve strengthened with each passing day. He began researching child advocacy programs and reaching out to social workers who shared his passion for protecting vulnerable kids. His suspension, once a punishment, now felt like an opportunity, a chance to make a real difference. As the end of his suspension approached, Clark felt a renewed sense of purpose. He would return to the force not just as a cop, but as a champion for those who needed one most. His past had shaped him, but it no longer defined him. Now it was a tool, a way to understand and help the Tashas of the world. Clark stood nervously on the doorstep of Tasha's foster home, a small gift bag in his hand. He took a deep breath before ringing the doorbell. When Tasha answered, her eyes lit up with surprise and a hint of joy. Officer Clark, she exclaimed, her voice a mix of excitement and uncertainty. Clark smiled warmly. Hey there, Tasha, I wanted to check in on you. Is it okay if I come in for a bit? Tasha nodded and led him into the cozy living room. Clark sat down, feeling a bit out of place in the cheerful, lived-in space. He cleared his throat and looked at Tasha, who was watching him curiously. I wanted to tell you something important, Clark began, his voice gentle. You're safe now, Tasha. Really safe. Your uncle can't hurt you anymore, and you don't have to be afraid. Tasha's eyes welled up with tears, but she didn't look away. Are you sure? She whispered. Clark nodded firmly. I'm sure. I promise. As the months passed, Clark made it a point to visit Tasha regularly. Each time he came, he brought a small gift, a book, a colorful hair clip, or a funny keychain. Tasha's face would light up every time she saw him, her smile growing wider and more genuine with each visit. One sunny afternoon, Clark found Tasha in the backyard of her foster home, reading under a big oak tree. She waved him over excitedly. Officer Clark, look at this book. It's about a girl who becomes a scientist. Do you think I could be a scientist someday? Clark's heart swelled with pride. Of course you could, Tasha. You can be anything you set your mind to. As they sat together, Tasha began to open up more about her dreams. She talked about wanting to help other kids like her maybe becoming a doctor or a teacher. Clark listened intently, offering encouragement and support. You know, Tasha said softly, I used to think nobody cared about me, but now I know that's not true. You cared, Officer Clark. You saved me. Clark felt a lump form in his throat. He hadn't realized how much his actions had meant to Tasha. For the first time in years, he felt a deep sense of fulfillment knowing he had made a real difference in someone's life. As the sun began to set, casting a warm glow over the yard, Clark watched Tasha laugh and play with her foster siblings. He saw the light in her eyes, the spring in her step, and knew that she was finally getting the chance to just be a kid, safe, loved, and full of hope for the future. As the days grew warmer and spring blossomed, Clark received an unexpected phone call one evening. It was Tasha, her voice bubbling with excitement. Officer Clark, guess what? My school is having a talent show next week and I'm going to sing, she exclaimed. Clark couldn't help but smile at her enthusiasm. That's wonderful, Tasha, 
I bet you'll do great. There was a brief pause before Tasha continued, her voice suddenly shy. I was wondering, would you like to come watch? It's on Friday at 7 p.m. Clark felt a warmth spread through his chest. I'd be honored, Tasha. I wouldn't miss it for the world. The night of the talent show arrived, and Clark found himself sitting in the school auditorium, surrounded by parents and teachers. He felt a bit out of place in his casual clothes, having come straight from work, but his nervousness faded as he thought about how much this meant to Tasha. As the lights dimmed and the show began, Clark watched act after act with polite interest. But when Tasha's name was called, he sat up straight, his heart pounding with anticipation. Tasha walked onto the stage looking small but determined under the bright lights. She wore a pretty blue dress and her hair was neatly braided. She approached the microphone and Clark could see her taking a deep breath. Before I start, Tasha said, her voice clear and steady, I want to dedicate this song to someone very special. Officer Clark, you're my hero. This is for you. Clark felt his breath catch in his throat. He hadn't expected this at all. As Tasha began to sing, her sweet voice filling the auditorium, Clark found himself blinking back tears. The song was about finding hope in dark times and the power of kindness. With every word, Clark could feel the emotion behind Tasha's performance. He thought about how far she had come, from the scared, bruised girl he'd found in the park to this confident young person on stage. As Tasha's song came to an end, the audience erupted in applause. Clark stood up, clapping harder than anyone else, tears now freely streaming down his face. He didn't care who saw. He was too proud, too moved by Tasha's gesture. When Tasha's eyes found his in the crowd, she beamed at him, her face glowing with happiness. In that moment, Clark realized just how much he had come to care for her. She wasn't just a case or a child he had helped. She had become an important part of his life reminding him of the good he could do in the world. As the auditorium emptied after the talent show, Clark waited patiently near the stage for Tasha. When she finally emerged, her face still flushed with excitement, he greeted her with a warm smile. You were amazing up there, Tasha, Clark said, his voice filled with pride. Tasha's eyes lit up. Really? You liked it? Clark nodded. I loved it. And that dedication, I don't know what to say. They walked together to a quiet corner of the school hallway, away from the bustling crowd. Tasha fidgeted with the hem of her dress, suddenly looking shy. Officer Clark, she began, her voice soft. I wanted to tell you something. Clark knelt down to her level, giving her his full attention. What is it, Tasha? Tasha took a deep breath, her eyes glistening with unshed tears. I never thought anyone could care about me. For so long I felt alone and scared, but you changed that. Clark felt a lump form in his throat as Tasha continued. You believed me when no one else did. You protected me and made me feel safe. Now I know I'm not alone anymore. Overwhelmed with emotion, Clark struggled to find the right words. He thought about how this brave young girl had touched his life, breaking through the walls he'd built around his heart. Tasha, he said, his voice thick with feeling. You've changed my life too. For years I thought I was just going through the motions, doing my job. But you made me realize something important. He paused, gathering his thoughts. You showed me that fighting for others, standing up for what's right is always worth it, no matter the cost. You've reminded me why I became a police officer in the first place. Tasha's eyes widened a mix of surprise and joy on her face. Really? Clark nodded, a gentle smile on his face. Really? You're an incredible person, Tasha. Your strength, your kindness, they've inspired me to be better, to do better. Tears spilled down Tasha's cheeks, but she was smiling. Without warning, she threw her arms around Clark in a tight hug. Clark, momentarily startled, hugged her back, feeling a warmth spread through his chest. As they pulled apart, Clark saw a new light in Tasha's eyes, hope, trust, and the knowledge that she was truly cared for. He realized that in helping Tasha, he had also begun to heal his own old wounds.
In the weeks following Tasha's talent show, Clark found himself unable to shake the feeling that he needed to do more. The experience with Tasha had opened his eyes to the flaws in the system he'd been a part of for so long. He couldn't ignore the other children who might be suffering as Tasha had. One morning, Clark walked into the precinct with a determined look on his face. His colleagues noticed the change immediately. Gone was the gruff, cynical officer they'd known for years. In his place stood a man with a mission. I need to talk to you all, Clark announced, gathering his fellow officers around. We need to do better for the kids in our community. He shared Tasha's story, careful to protect her privacy, but emphasizing the failures of the system that had nearly cost her everything. As he spoke, Clark's passion was evident, his voice filled with a conviction that surprised even him. We can't let this happen to another child, he said firmly. We need to push for changes in how we handle these cases. Clark's colleagues listened intently, many of them nodding in agreement. They'd never seen this side of him before, and it was both surprising and inspiring. Over the next few months, Clark threw himself into researching the foster care system and child protective services. He reached out to social workers, lawyers, and child advocates, learning everything he could about the challenges they faced and the changes they believed were necessary. Clark began attending city council meetings, speaking up about the need for better training for officers dealing with child abuse cases. He advocated for closer cooperation between law enforcement and social services, pushing for a more holistic approach to child protection. His efforts didn't go unnoticed. Clark's superiors, initially wary of his newfound activism, began to see the positive impact he was having. His fellow officers, inspired by his dedication, started to change their own approaches to cases involving children. One day, as Clark was pinning up flyers for a community meeting on foster care reform, his partner, Officer Rodriguez, approached him. You know, Clark, Rodriguez said, a hint of admiration in his voice. I never thought I'd see the day when you'd be the one pushing for change. That little girl really got to you, huh? Clark paused, a small smile playing on his lips. She showed me what really matters, Rodriguez. We have the power to make a difference, and it's about time we used it. As word of Clark's efforts spread, he found himself becoming a voice for the voiceless. Children in the system, foster parents, and even some of his old contacts in social services reached out to him, sharing their stories and supporting his cause. As the seasons changed, so did Clark and Tasha's lives. Clark continued to visit Tasha regularly their bond growing stronger with each passing day. He became more than just a protector. He was now a mentor and father figure to the young girl who had touched his heart. One sunny afternoon, Clark arrived at Tasha's foster home, a wrapped gift tucked under his arm. Tasha burst out the front door, her face beaming with joy. Officer Clark, she exclaimed, throwing her arms around him in a tight hug. Clark chuckled, his once gruff demeanor now softened by the warmth in his eyes. Hey there, kiddo. Happy birthday. Tasha's eyes widened as she saw the gift. You remembered. Of course I did, Clark said, handing her the present. Go on. Open it. Tasha tore into the wrapping paper, revealing a beautiful journal with her name embossed on the cover. It's perfect, she whispered, running her fingers over the smooth leather. I thought you might like a place to write down all those stories you're always telling me, Clark explained, his voice gentle. Tasha hugged the journal to her chest, her eyes shining with gratitude. Thank you, Officer Clark, for everything. As they sat on the porch swing, Clark marveled at the change in Tasha. Gone was the frightened, withdrawn girl he had first met. In her place was a confident, hopeful young person with a bright future ahead of her. You know... Clark said, his voice thick with emotion. Seeing you like this, it makes everything worth it. Tasha leaned her head against Clark's shoulder, a gesture that spoke volumes about the trust and love that had grown between them. You saved me, Clark. You're my hero. Clark felt a lump form in his throat. No, Tasha. You saved me. You showed me what really matters in this world. As they sat there, watching the sun dip below the horizon, Clark felt a peace he had never known before. He had found redemption in Tasha's smile, in her laughter, in the knowledge that his actions had changed a life for the better.
The once hardened officer now understood the true power of compassion and love. In helping Tasha, he had healed a part of himself he thought was lost forever. And as he looked at the young girl beside him, her future now bright with possibility, Clark knew that this was just the beginning of a beautiful journey for both of them. If you enjoyed the story of Officer Clark and Tasha, I hand-picked this next story that will touch your heart. Please don't miss this one. Click here to watch it.